absolute masterclass performance from Dame Dalla last night in Denver. Lillard scored or assisted on 80 points last night, tied for the most in a playoff game in NBA history. All this in a loss with the Nuggets taking a 3-2 lead in the series. You know, we can't seem to talk clutch without the other West Coast comparison, and that is Steph Curry. Max, yeah. who would you want most in the playoffs? Oh, Damian Lillard, easily. Look, it seems like I'm piling on Steph with this stuff, but, like, let's be honest, everybody. Steph won a championship, won, when LeBron didn't have Kyrie or Kevin Love. Still went six games. Stop, every Stop. By the way, he won the MVP of that series. Like, they looked at, we can't give this to Steph. All right, give it to the guy who guarded LeBron. Iguodala got it. And then he lost a 73-win season to LeBron. And then they added KD. Steph was no longer the best player on the team. And they won two championships. He's played in five finals, has yet to win a finals MVP. Come on, Damian Lillard? We see it with our eyes. He hasn't been on teams like Steph's been on. Not even close. But Damian Lillard, from this era so far, is one of the most clutch play performers, period. He might be the most clutch performer. Even last night was bananas. Not his fault guys were missing shots. No. In the playoffs when it matters most, Stephen A., you know what Steph did win or go home? In overtime, the reason they're not still playing when they needed him to be at his best? Zero points, zero assists, zero rebounds in the last 3.30 of overtime. Warriors not playing anymore. Now compare that to what Damian Lillard just did. 55 in double overtime. Kept bringing them back from the dead. Under pressure in the playoffs? It's really not a knock against Steph. But under pressure in the playoffs? Easily. Damian Lillard. Not for me. Um, you know, we, you, we're analyzing it differently. No surprise there. But I will tell you this. Here's what I think you're missing. When you look, last night was a perfect example as to why I wouldn't pick Damian Lillard. And I believe that Damian Lillard is arguably, I mean, we're, we're talking Michael Jordan status when it comes to clutch. This brother, you put the ball in his hands. Damian Lillard is something to behold. And next to Steph Curry, there's nobody that is his equal as a point guard spot, as a point guard in the NBA. From a marksmanship standpoint, I get all of that. He's that elite. It's a close call. But here's why I pick Steph Curry. I think Steph Curry is the greatest shooter God has ever created. Damian Lillard even concedes that, number one. No doubt. Number two, Steph Curry's movement without the ball and what it creates for teammates, particularly those who can make shots, cannot go unnoticed. Last night was an example. Damian Lillard himself was spectacular, but everybody around him had contested shots. Everyone. Nobody is necessarily getting open because Damian Lillard will give it to you. He got the ball in his hands and he'll shoot. He'll take, he'll take you down. But with Steph Curry, because of his movement without the basketball and how frightening he is due to his range, it not only forces defenses to extend, but it creates a level of paranoia because you literally it's a great have point. to watch where is he, where is he. Hold on. I'll let you speak. Hold on. You got to have your head on a swivel. Watch it for everybody else. And then with Steph Curry, he scares you so much. You literally watched Memphis concede and the Lakers concede the hell with everybody else. And literally put three and four guys on him in pivotal plays, daring anybody else to shoot just so he wouldn't. Mm -hmm. And those kind of things, that's when it comes to shooting, even when Steph doesn't shoot because of the paranoia he creates because of his movement without the basketball, why I would always pick him above Ex anybody else when it comes to shooting. I think those are... Excellent points. I'm not going back against those points. I agree with those points. Here's the problem, Stephen A. However you want to slice it, I saw a 73-win team with the fate of the universe on the line against the LeBron James team trying to be the greatest team ever. Beat the Bulls 72-win seeds. you got to win the championship. They're at home. They have the greatest half-court offense in history. Steph is the conductor of that offense. They went the last four minutes and 22 seconds in the fourth quarter without scoring a point. And Steph was awful. Hold it. And they lost that. Hold on. That's one. Two. 
I just mentioned the 0, 0.0 rebound, zero assist. Stephen A., here's the bottom line. If Steph had Damian Lillard's clutch gene, we wouldn't be asking, is he the GOAT shooter? We know he is. Or among the GOAT point guards. If Steph had Lillard's clutch gene, he'd be in the GOAT conversation. Period. Hold on. If he was performed under pressure like Damian Lillard, he'd be in the GOAT conversation. But, but, Damian, but Damian Lillard is not in the GOAT conversation for whatever reason. So the point is, that's either here nor there. The point is negated. At the end of the day, Damian Lillard, I'm not holding it against him, but Damian Lillard once got swept by Anthony Davis and Drew Holiday. I'm not holding that against him. You keep bringing up the 73-win season. You keep bringing up stuff about Clay from years ago. I mean, I'm sorry, from Steph from years ago. Yeah, all of those things are to be acknowledged. There are things that we could acknowledge in the past about Damian Lillard, too. It doesn't take away from their greatness. They're both phenomenal. They're both future first ballot Hall of Famers. Damian Lillard is on another level. Clutch-wise, we talk about Michael Jordan status. But even he would concede. Steph Curry's the greatest shooter yeah. ever. Ever. Yeah. When we ask that question, that's where I'm going with. Yeah, I'll just leave you with this. Uh, Dame scored or assisted on 80 points in Game 5, tying an NBA playoff record. Fellas, let's keep it rolling. It is no secret that Snoop is an L.A. icon. The dog father reps his Lakers as hard as Spike Lee goes for his Knicks. Purple and gold sky, Stephen A. Uh, when Snoop was asked about the Clippers, the JV team to most L.A. natives back in January on Stephen A.'s world, he had this to say. Laker to a Clipper, man, I can't be faded. Come on, man. The clip. We talking about the Clippers, the the team that has zero banners, that are the opening night champions for fourteen years straight, have no banners, no nothing. Kawhi is a great player. Paul George is a great player. They got great coaches and the homies on their team. They do a great job, but they're not the Lakers, man. It's just something about that purple and gold, man. And it's like they need to get a whole new stadium and get a whole new stigma because they're never going to win playing in our in our living room. That'd be Gucci's with the bees. Uh, but last night after his Lakers got embarrassed in Phoenix, he posted this gem on IG and had me dying. Look at the last line. Never thought I'd say it, but we're sorry. The Clippers better than us. Frank Vogel can't coach. And why the F Montrez Harrell isn't getting no run. This is heartbreaking. AD hurt more than Mary J. Blige records. We saw. You not going to cry. Uh, Clippers Mavs all tied up a game two, a pivotal game five tonight at Staples Center. Kawhi is third in points per game this postseason, averaging 33. Keep in mind, Kawhi is from California. Does Kawhi have the best chance to become the king of L.A.? The best chance to become the king of L.A.? No. They haven't won anything yet. Last time I checked, LeBron has the ring. He's the reigning defending NBA champion. And even if he loses Thursday night or Saturday, it does not mean that the Clippers win. I will say this, however. Uh, Snoop Dogg, by the way, for y'all, for, for both of y'all to know, Snoop Dogg couldn't make it on the show this morning because he's doing, he's filming a movie in Atlanta, Georgia, as we speak.